Hello, um, welcome to video 16 of our AS level economics videos. And this is where we meet market failure, this big concept which accounts for the next, I don't know, 10 or so of my videos. Um, this big concept, so important, because this is where we stop saying, oh, market mechanism, it works so well, and we start saying, hang on a sec, it doesn't work so well, sometimes it fails, although people will disagree about when failure exists, and, and maybe the government needs to step in, the state needs to step in and correct that market failure. So um, it's an important moment in our course, market failure, the market mechanism at fault. Uh, when I did A-level uh, back in 1985, um, market failure wasn't on the, on, on the syllabus, I don't think, or I don't remember doing it. It's something that we that certainly we've become more aware of, and now it's a major, major part of your course, I'm sure. So, um, so here we go. Market failure and an introduction to types of market failure, and then the succeeding videos will take market failures one by one and explore them in more depth. So, let's start with a, a definition. Big definition. It's my definition. This is how I define market failure. Market failure occurs when the price mechanism fails to deliver the optimal and most efficient allocation of resources in a market such that the best level of output for society is reached. When that price mechanism or market mechanism leads to the wrong level of output, maybe too much, maybe too little, maybe none at all, maybe it, consumers are tricked into giving too much of their resources, maybe firms um, are tricked into giving too much of their resources, uh, maybe in particular markets there's types of market failure, commodity markets, labour markets. Um, all in all, we can say that it's when the price mechanism, the market mechanism, forces of demand and supply fail to deliver the best level of output. And what do I mean by best level of output? The best level for society. Not what's best for the firm or an individual, but for society. If the socially optimal level of output is not reached in a market, as a result of the market mechanism operating, that's market failure. Okay, so let's uh, look at some of the types of market failure. I'll just pause if you want to freeze the, the if you want to freeze the, the video and, and get down that uh, definition. Okay, right. Let's move on. So here, are, here's just a, a list of types of market failure and some questionable market failures. So when externalities are created positive and negative externalities being created uh, as a result of economic activity must be the most important type of market failure. Certainly when you're doing your AS level it's incredibly important and uh, you, should, um, you, you, know, you should watch the next, I think, four videos I've got lined up, or three videos, all about externalities. It's that important and there's some important diagrams to learn there as well. This happens when people only consider their private costs and benefits when they enter into economic transactions. They, stop, uh, they don't stop to think about what their buying or selling of the good, what effect it has on the wider world. They ignore those costs or those benefits, and that leads to an, an inappropriate level of output in that industry, not the right level of output for society. So we explore that in a lot of depth, and we look at industries such as tobacco, alcohol, but also education and healthcare. Secondly, when markets are missing, sometimes if we leave it to the market mechanism, entire markets would be missing because no one would be willing to buy the good. They'd wait for someone else to buy the good and then they would use it free as what's called a free rider. Um, if we leave it to the market mechanism, probably markets such as lighthouses in traffic lights wouldn't exist. And of course the correction for that is that government steps in and provides these goods uh, paid for by general taxation. Uh, but if we left it to the market mechanism, there would surely be market failure. These markets would, would, not ex would not exist at all. Thirdly, asymmetric information or asymmetric knowledge um, occurs when a supplier knows much more than a buyer and is able to fool or trick the buyer into spending more than they should on, 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 uh, on something. Um, unscrupulous lawyers or bankers or doctors or dentists or car mechanics uh, might might be examples of where they exploit their superior knowledge and 
fool their customer into paying more than they should and over allocating their resources. It can happen the other way as well. It can happen that the buyer has more knowledge than the seller. Um, an antiques expert wandering into a junk shop might see something worth a lot of money and only pay a little amount of money for it. But, but, but mostly the asymmetric information is uh, that the supplier has superior knowledge. Government steps in to correct that with laws, uh, consumer protection laws, uh, to, to stop false advertising and false descriptions and protect the consumer against bad practice by firms. It's not a perfect law, set of laws, but uh, it's there to correct the market failure. Fourthly, labour market failure exists. Uh, in our previous video, we were looking at labour market, we talked about equilibrium, um, but labour market failure exists because not all the demand for labour is always in the same place or in the same industry as those willing to supply themselves. So we get a mismatch and, uh, because of the immobility of labour. Um, and then there's other kinds of labour market failure because not all units of labour are treated the same. There's discrimination against certain groups in the labour market. And some would say that even national minimum wage, um, which is government action, creates a kind of failure. It's not market failure, but it would be a kind of failure in a labour market, and we must look at that as well. Um, now, some other issues, questionable market failure. Some people would argue that these are not market failure. I include them here because they are on uh, A-level uh, syllabuses. So, you, you know, you should know about these. But, but it's a debate whether these incorporate market failure. Lack of competition in a market. If we leave things to the market mechanism, um, some industries gravitate towards monopoly, where there's a single supplier dominating the market, and that's, that, that leads to possibilities of exploitation uh, and a lack of choice. And um, the, that monopoly might protect its position and, and fight off would-be competitors. Well, the government doesn't want that. They want competition and they want choice, and the government might act against abusive monopolies. Now, some would say that's not market failure. That's just the market mechanism in practice. But some would say it's a failure of the market to give what's best to society. Uh, unacceptable income inequality. The government recognises that. All political parties, certainly in the UK and across most of Europe, um, incorporate progressive taxation. They, they tax higher income people at higher rates so that um, to redress the balance and to redistribute income more equally, not completely equally, how equally is a debate of course, um, but uh, more equally than it would be if we just left things to the market mechanism. If we left things to the market mechanism, there would be incredible inequalities of income, much more than there is at the moment. And some people would say that's, that's just the way it goes, it's not a failure but others would argue that is a failure of the market mechanism and requires correction. Finally, there are commodity price fluctuations. Commodities, agricultural goods, um, metals and fossil fuels under the ground, uh, naturally occurring substances, these uh, tend to see prices fluctuate far more than in other markets, markets for manufactured goods. We need to explore why that happens and why it's not a good thing and how it can be corrected and it's corrected through buffer stock systems um, and buffer stock schemes so uh, you know and some would say so what you know the prices go up the prices go down that's just the way the market is it's not a failure but others do argue that because the price fluctuations can be so great it restricts the ability of suppliers to be able to plan for the future and they may even quit that industry which leaves us a society vulnerable to a lack of food and a lack of energy and consequently it needs correction. So I include these but I do recognise that maybe they are not considered market failure by all. So that's an introduction to market failure. The following videos explore these in depth and explore the methods by which and evaluate the methods by which governments attempt to correct the market failure, recognising that sometimes governments in their attempt to correct the market failure, actually make things even worse. And that's called government failure. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the coming videos. I hope that's useful as an introduction. And um, I'll see you soon in yet another video. Okay, bye-bye.